let's look at measurement and units. Now, physics is a process, and a good general way to summarize the process is we observe the world around us, we make measurements of what we observe, and then we look for patterns in those measurements. Now, I'm going to focus on that measurement part today, and there's a good quote to kind of summarize the idea of measurements in physics, and that quote is, measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not so. The quote is usually attributed to Galileo, uh, the old Italian guy, but really it was said by two French people, but whatever. It's an important quote because a big idea in physics is we try to measure what we observe. And that's a big basic thing about physics is it's all based on measurements of what's going on around us. Now, in order to do this, in order to make measurements, we need units. And I'll write down three different quotes, um, and you'll see why measurements are important. First one, I had to walk like 12 to get here. Second one, it took me 75 to finish my homework. And third one, the speed limit is 95. So these three quotes probably don't sit well with you. And the reason why is they don't have units. Without units, measurements aren't useful. So in that first quote, okay, it took you, you had to walk 12, but 12 what? 12 feet, 12 meters, 12 miles, 12 kilometers, 12 light years? We don't know. That's an important piece of information. For that second one, if someone tells you that it took 75 to finish the homework, well, you, you really want to know if that's 75 seconds, 75 minutes, 75 hours. Um, and in the last one, the speed limit is 95. So if you're from the United States, 95 as a speed limit sounds a little ridiculous. A speed limit of 95 miles per hour is pretty high, and I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. However, if you're from Canada and the speed limit is 95 kilometers per hour, that's way more reasonable, and you would see that around. So units are key when you make a measurement. And one way that I often say this is we don't want naked numbers in physics. The numbers have to have units. Think of the units as the clothes. The, the, the numbers shouldn't be seen <laughs> in public without their units. Okay. So then the next problem is, is we have a lot of different units we could choose from um, for length. Are we going to measure in feet, in inches, in yards, in meters, in centimeters, in kilometers, in light years? In time, are we going to use seconds, minutes, days, years, class periods, milliseconds? In order for us to communicate with each other clearly, we need to agree on a common set of units so that you're not using feet and I'm using meters and you're not using milliseconds and I'm using minutes. We need to have a common set of units. So scientists have addressed this. They've developed many different types of common sets of units. The most common one these days, uh, and the one that we're going to use in this class, is the system of SI, SI units. SI stands for Système International. It's French. I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but we're just going to call it SI units. And the system of SI units... I know it sounds strange to say system of SI, and it's repeating system, whatever. Um, this system has seven fundamental units at its base. And those seven fundamental units are the meter, which is a unit of length, the second, which is a unit of time, the kilogram, which is the unit of mass, the mole, which is the unit of amount of stuff, or amount of substance, if you want to sound better. The Kelvin, which is the unit of temperature. The Ampere, which is the unit of current. And the Candela, which is the unit of luminous intensity. Now, we're going to see some of these units more than others. The ones we're going to see a lot of at the beginning of this course are going to be the meter, the second, and the kilogram. You've probably heard of the mole and the Kelvin, especially if you took chemistry. Uh, later on in class, we'll see the Ampere uh, and the Candela. 
well, we love the candela, but we're not really going to use it much in this course. So these seven units can be combined in different ways to make new units. And the units that are created by combining them are called derived units. So there are seven fundamental units, and if you mix them up and combine them in different ways, you can create derived units. So derived units would be all kinds of things, such as meters per second, or kilogram meters squared, or ampere second, or kilogram per second cubed per Kelvin to the fourth. You can mix them in all kinds of different ways, and we will see that throughout the course. When you do math with numbers that have units, there are two major rules we're going to consider today. And I'm going to write down a few examples. So let's do that. So what you should notice when you add and subtract things with units, the units do not change. If you add 5 meters to 15 meters, you get 20 meters. The units don't change. If you do 50 seconds minus 10 seconds, you get 40 seconds. In addition and subtraction, the units don't change. Also, notice that when you add and subtract things with units, the two, uh, the two things that you're adding or the two things that you're subtracting have to already have the same units. You can't do 5 kilograms minus 4 meters. That doesn't make physical sense, so we're not allowed to do that. Okay, now I'm going to write down a couple other examples. So when we multiply or divide quantities with units, the units also multiply or divide. So if you look right here, if I have 5 meters times 5 meters, well, okay, the 5 multiplies by the 5, so I get 25, that's what the numbers do, but the units also multiply. I have meters times meters, so I get meters squared. And same with division. If I have 20 meters divided by 5 seconds, okay, the 20 divided by the 5 gives you 4. That's what the numbers do. But also the units divide. You have meters divided by seconds, so in the end you get meters per second. All right, we're going to use these concepts throughout the course, so it's good to get comfortable with them now.